I think most of us have in one way or another heard or known the story of the Good Samaritan, which is only found in Luke. And before Sharon reads that scripture, I will share a few words of introduction. I'll try to put some history around it, some context that I hope will assist in each of you getting more out of the message in the scripture itself. The Samaritans were one of the original 12 tribes of Israel. Remember, descendants of the 12 sons of Abraham. And they settled in the northern part of what we name as Israel today, Palestine in the past. And the others were in the southern end. The northern end is, uh, encompasses Galilee and some of the most fertile farmland. And the southern end has the, the Dead Sea and Jerusalem and, and, and that, that region. Uh, and the early part of Israel, the northern part, was probably the most populated and probably had, had as much say or more say than, than the southern part. But with time, Jerusalem becoming the capital and gaining, gaining uh, prestige and strength became more significant. But they came to see each other as very, very different, the Samaritans and the Jews. Now, remember, the Samaritans had the same biblical text the Jews did. Uh, that is, their Bible was the Pentateuch, <coughs> excuse me, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But the people in the southern part of the country added the others in. They considered those uh, Holy Scripture as well. So you go on to Joshua, Judges, Ruth, and, and so forth. They didn't agree on just the first five, and so they added them, but the people in the north stuck strictly to the first five. So there is one difference. Then in the eighth century, and the two areas that figure predominantly in history with the evolution and change of this region, are known now as uh, Iraq and Iran, but back then Babylon and Assyria. And Assyria in the eighth century was the big dog in that region and swept across the Middle East and conquered the northern part of Israel, which would be those two particular tribes. Now the way the Assyrians conquered and maintained uh, control of the people they conquered <coughs> because, uh, you know, conquering is the easy part. What you do afterward is the hard part, always. And uh, very interesting when you think in terms of how Russia is treating the Ukraine right now. You know, you wipe everything out. So there's no remembrance of what was. You, you get rid of it. So eventually there's nothing for the older folks to pass on to the younger folks in terms of tradition and nationhood or tribalistic uh, thinking. And then you bring your people, you transplant people from Assyria over to these northern areas, and you just let them live side by side because eventually you know uh, they're going to intermarry and they're going to mingle. And over time, what was will just kind of fade away into what it becomes. That is a, a one way of, a way of doing it. And that's how the Assyrians did it. So in in conquering and then bringing their own people to settle in those northern areas, they, uh, the Jews that were there began to adopt Assyrian practices. Their religion became more synchristic, which means they brought in magic and they brought in mystical things and other things that weren't traditionally a part of Judaism. And then they didn't keep all the laws, they intermarried and so uh, the southern region saw them as impure, unclean, different, separate, not the same. So there was bad feelings. It got to the point in Jesus' day that you did not talk to a Samaritan if you were Jewish, you did not shake hands with them, you did not walk in the territory that was outlined as theirs, because if you did any of those things, you would become impure, unclean. 
you'd have to go through a ritualistic practices with the priest to be purified again. And these things are kind of in the background of this story that involves a Samaritan. Um, today, if you go to Israel, uh, part of the region that was Samaria now has like a 30-foot wall all the way around it. It is part of the West Bank. And it's difficult to get out and difficult to get into that area. I have always tried to get in to visit Mount Gerizim. And Mount Gerizim was where the Samaritans built their temple in contrast to the one in Jerusalem. And to this day, once a year, they still have a sacrifice of lambs, hundreds and hundreds of lambs. So they maintain that entire tradition. But if you, if you want to imagine the feelings between the Jews and the Samaritans of Jesus' day, in your own mind, think of, think of a group of people that you would least like to associate with or be associated with in, in, your, in your life. And then you start to feel the vitriol that these folks had for each other. So when Jesus tells this story, uh, the Jews hearing this story would immediately jump to conclusions as to who is the good person, who is the bad person, uh, who is the villain, and who would be the hero. Hence my question in the sermon title, was the Good Samaritan really good? Sharon, if you would read that scripture now. The parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it, he answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and salvation. Amen.